Museum director Ben Simons is anxious for you to see the state-of-the-art changes made to the facility and also check out two new galleries. The Marble Lives Katie Zerilli gives us a sneak peek at the space that's been made modern while it continues to honor its history. Folks who come and visit the Academy Art Museum here in Easton for the first time in months are going to notice a number of exciting changes, starting with this brand new state-of-the-art entrance. It's all glass, there's no structural steel. So it's actually really new technology. And um, the scale is appropriate to Easton, but it definitely reads as a art museum entrance. We're an accredited art museum, one of only a thousand plus in the country. So we really wanted it to have the entrance that it deserved. Trading in quaintness for a touch of grandeur. It glows during the day, it glows at night and you go into the new Saul Atrium Gallery inside, which is a redone atrium space. That'll be glowing in a different way. New LED lighting has the artwork just popping off the walls. LED has become really good at, at um, creating nice color temperatures and also nice, uh, the full range of the visible spectrum, for instance. And we can control the light levels very well. So if we have works on paper shows, we can bring down the light levels as needed. Um, so it's just a, a very flexible and dynamic system that we have in place now. Some changes are invisible to the eye, but important. They've worked behind the scenes on their HVAC system to ensure museum conditions in all of the galleries. More than 60 years after its opening, it's a place that feels like new while preserving the old. It really reads as a modern, contemporary museum, but honoring the traditions of the Academy and its historic uh, past. Ben Simons is the museum's director. He says this major renovation is the result of a capital campaign. The construction happened over the winter, but COVID-19 delayed the original opening date, which would have been back in April perseverance and patience persisted. Now they're ready to reopen this Saturday, August 1st, and give the community quite a show. It's really tough for people to visualize things that are on paper, so you have to see it in person. And now that we have this beautiful entrance, people are, are really getting the concept and really excited for it. They should also be excited to view two new exhibitions. New Photography 2 is a juried competition that features works from artists at various stages of their careers and aims to highlight the broad spectrum of photography. Antonio McAfee Legacy presents found portraits of middle-class African-American historical figures. Upon reopening on Saturday, the museum will have procedures and precautions in place to keep folks safe, like mask requirements, hand sanitizer stations, daily cleaning, and weekly professional cleaning. I would encourage people to come at their leisure during the week after that, um, just to avoid crowds and really be able to take in the museum kind of in a, with your small group of friends or on your own. Ben also has visions of what he hopes this courtyard becomes for the community. We hope that the courtyard will become a really great public space, place where you can come before your visit, hang out with friends, family, uh, have lunch, have meals, read a paper, read a book, um, come in, take in the museum, and then enjoy it, um, enjoy the beautiful public space outside as well. This being the museum's third renovation project since its inception in 1958, the story of this place is pages and pages long, and no doubt includes a chapter on its influence outside of these walls. Teaching people uh, from two to 100 to how to do art, how to appreciate art, and to really work art into their lives, which is such an enriching um, part of people's lives. No matter how deep-rooted it gets in Talbot County, and no matter how possibly fancy even its future renovation projects could be, this museum will never lose its most extraordinary quality. There's an intimacy to it. When you're experiencing a work of art, you're often standing in front of it, either alone or with friends, and there's that kind of direct intimacy of being in the presence of art. And the Academy Art Museum really specializes in creating that intimate experience with art. So we're able to provide a professional museum environment, but to keep that intimacy.
It's a very special combination. A combination that creates the perfect composition for this crown jewel to continue to shine in the community. How about that? Ben says the renovation project wouldn't have been possible without the generosity of many donors. Oh, and by the way, Lisa, despite the difficulties presented by COVID-19, the museum used the last few months to develop new virtual audiences. As a matter of fact, we're going to head back to Easton after the break and hear more about that. Even while folks couldn't come inside the building, as a result, the museum's audience has grown in big ways. We head back to Easton now to learn more. It was a spring of constant closing doors due to COVID-19. When that happened, those in the art world were quick to open windows. We saw the incredible creativity going on in the museum world around uh, online content. And we decided to put on our own program of online content called Art at Home. And all staff have been incredibly dynamic in producing content on short notice. The Academy Art Museum in Easton closed in the middle of March. Director Ben Simons loved watching everyone there jump into action. I would call it an entrepreneurial spirit. So if, you know, in department heads meetings each week, we would have new ideas proposed by staff. And then not just throwing out ideas, but creating a plan to do them. And very often by the next staff meeting the following week, the content was already in production or already done. Art at Home provides opportunities for both children and adults to engage in art virtually. Staff post family art project ideas to the website, offer virtual conversations with artists, invite those interested in networking to have their portfolio reviewed, and get creative with weekly contests. Ideas born as a result of the pandemic that aren't going anywhere. Virtual is here to stay. One of their staff members even put together art kits to be given away for free to families. A win-win. Families get a distraction during these different days, and kids might just end up finding a new skill. That's really the, at the heart of the institution's mission, is to make people comfortable, confident, that they can appreciate art, and that they can make art. Their online offerings are helping that mission big time. There's a sense that you know, the, the reach of virtual is beyond uh, the local region. You know, for Juneteenth, we had audiences up into Philadelphia and New York and beyond. And it seems this is only the beginning. The sky's the limit. I mean, you could take a class, you could take a virtual class or a camp um, from anywhere. Ben says the museum is offering virtual summer camps and they'll host physical adult classes in the month of August, which will be small in size. Don't be intimidated. Um, we welcome all levels of instruction, even if you're a total beginner, especially if you're someone who said, gee, I always wanted to take an art class but never had the time or never got around to it. Now's the time. They also took the time to improve what's offered in their online store. Visitors will find gifts there that are guaranteed to be nowhere else. You can purchase uh, your own set of Frederick Hammersley socks. You can get a um, uh, all kinds of other you can, stickers, bumper stickers and mugs and other material related to the Academy Art Museum online too. So. Ben looks back on the last few months with a smile. Proud that his team got creative in what was not only a wild time because of the pandemic, but also because of the construction being finished at the museum for their renovation project. We did it. And so, I, you know, it's there were moments <laughs> where it was very intense, but um, the staff pulled together and we achieved a really a great virtual program. We remained sustainable and we're finishing up the construction. So our major goals came through. Just a few months that have certainly changed the future for a museum museum that's been around for 60 plus years. There's so much that you can present online that I think we would, you know, we're going to continue that. But um, if there's, you know, knock on wood, if there's another shutdown in the future, we will continue a robust art, uh, art at home program. Definitely. Yeah. Because when it comes to sharing art, there's nothing they won't do. And to find out more about what's available at the museum, both online and in person, head to delmarvalife.com.